Hey everyone! Thanks for joining me today for We Love Science. Before we get started, I do want to put out a quick reminder. This is going to be our last book party for the summer. Um, with all the excitement of Summer Library Adventure, we do take a program break in August. Give us a chance to kind of catch our breath and recharge a little bit before the school year starts again. So when you see the fall newsletter come out, um, it'll have details about programs for September and October. And our book parties will be coming back for kindergarten and first grade. So if you have anyone who is moving up to second grade in the fall, congratulations. Um, you'll be able to join Jeff and Jennifer for the Paperback Pals book club, which will also start up again in September. So if you do have any questions, please get in touch, let me know. Um, otherwise, I think we're ready to get started with today's program. Um, so I was really excited to find the We Love Science series. Um, it features a lot of different characters who all have some interest in STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math. And it has fun and interesting stories that all center on those topics. So of course, today's book is one of the loves science that delves into mixing and measuring. And one of the reasons I liked the book was because there was a group of friends who was able to problem solve together. Um, so you got to see some really great teamwork as well as science and math in action. And I can tell you, even in the library, teamwork is super important. So for today's projects, you are going to want to have a few additional supplies on hand. Um, you'll want to make sure that you have your scissors, glue stick, and then some kind of art supplies that could be crayons, markers, colored pencils, um, and then anything else that you might want to use to decorate. So washi tape or stickers, whatever you have available. So we'll go ahead and make sure that we've got a clean, flat, workspace, our supplies are ready to go, as well as your kit that you've picked up from the Indian Trails Library. That should be everything that we need to get us started, and then we'll meet back here for our first project. Our first project today is a paper dog puppet. So you'll want to grab the colorful sheets of paper and the folded envelope from your supply kit, and then have your scissors and glue stick as well as your art supplies. Um, so I used a marker, but crayons or colored pencils would work as well. Um, and anything that you might want to use to decorate. So if we take a look at our envelope, you can see that there's an Indian Trails Library logo on the inside. And then it's been folded in half. And right on that seam in the middle, we've cut almost, but not quite edge to edge. And the reason we set it up that way is so that when we are done, you can fold it in half and you'll be able to fit your hand inside and use it like a puppet. So this part here is going to be the inside of our dog's mouth. And then you can choose which way you want the flap to go. That doesn't really matter. Um, but one side is going to be the top and the other will be the bottom. So our dog is going to need three things, eyes, nose, and ears. So your options are to draw everything on with your colored pencils, crayons, or markers, or you can use the sheets of paper to cut the shapes out and to glue it on. So I am going to use a yellow paper here. I'm going to start out making my ears. So I'm going to fold my sheet of yellow paper in half, and this will allow me to cut out both of my ears at the same time. So I'm going to start from one of the flat edges, and I'm going to cut a U shape. So that's going to be my dog's ears. Um, you may want to use a different shape. So this is going to be kind of like um, like poodle ears that are going to flop down. Um, you could also cut a triangle shape that would be more like a dog whose ears will stick up um, or whatever other shape inspires you. So once we have our two ears, 
Okay, we'll need to make a nose. So I think I'm gonna choose the blue paper for mine, and I'm going to cut out a smaller piece of it because my nose doesn't need to be quite that big. And again, I'm going to make like a U or a half circle, half circle shape. It's not that easy to say. So I'm gonna start out with a flat edge and then cut into it to make my nose. And it came out a little bit uneven. So I think I'm going to fix it. There we go. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so I have my nose. And then I'm going to choose to draw my eyes on. But you still have a few different colors of paper. So you're more than welcome to cut out two circles or another shape and glue those down for the eyes if you'd rather do it that way. Let me get my glue stick out here. Um, I think I'm going to start out by gluing down this flap here. So this would normally be the part of the envelope that you would use to seal. I'm not going to use a ton of glue, just a little bit so that on this side that I'm going to use for my face, that's going to um, keep it nice and flat. All right, so I'm going to start out by adding my ears. So I'm going to put those kind of towards the top and on either side. So I'll add some glue here and then place my ears. It looks, there we go. I think that looks even. All right, so we'll press those down. All right, and then I'm going to add my nose in the middle, kind of towards the bottom of the envelope here. So I will glue that down. All right, and then I'm going to take my marker. I'm going to draw in two eyes. All right, so my dog's face is complete eyes, nose, and ears. But you remember that I said that our puppet was going to be able to open up. So since this is going to be the inside of my dog's mouth, I think that I'm going to cut out a tongue shape so that I can glue that down here so that when you open up the puppet, you'll know that that is the inside of the dog's mouth. All right, so again, make that kind of U shape. I'm using my red paper, but you are welcome to choose a different color if you would prefer. All right, so I have a U shape here for my dog's tongue. I'm going to add some glue to the inside of the envelope. All right, so if we look at it here, when it's folded over, this is my dog's face, so when I open up, this part here would be kind of like the roof of the dog's mouth, and then this is going to be the bottom part where the tongue is. So I'm going to add some glue to the center here, and I want my tongue to be just sticking out like a teeny tiny little bit. All right. So now you can just sort of see my dog's tongue. But when I put the top of my hand into the top part here closest to my dog's face, fold my envelope over and put my thumb into the bottom part, you can see the inside of his mouth and his tongue there. So if you want to keep going with your project, you can definitely add some more details. Um, you could get creative, you could give your dog your teeth, or add some more detail to the inside of their mouth. Um, you could also add a collar. Um, you could draw more details onto their, their face. Maybe your dog has stripes or spots on their fur um, or add some decoration to their ears, whatever you feel until 
you're confident that your paper dog puppet is done. And now I think this puppy looks like they are ready to join the puppy party that we read about in our story, right? All right, so I'm gonna set this off to the side to let my glue dry just a little bit. I'm gonna clean up my workspace and then let's meet back here for our second project. Our second project is cupcake decorating. Now, there's a whole bunch of books in the We Love Science series, and they're all pretty awesome. But the reason I wanted to choose Libby Love Science Mix and Measure is because it had dogs, which are one of my favorite animals, and it had cupcakes, which is one of my favorite foods. So I was excited to see that um, the friends got to make and decorate cupcakes in the story, and it even included a cupcake recipe in the back. So I wish that there was a way that we could share cupcakes, that we could make a huge mess decorating them with frosting and sprinkles and stuff like that. But we're going to have to use our imagination because we have our paper cupcake decoration. So this is a pretty simple activity. We have our cupcake template here, and then our sticker sheet has a whole bunch of different decorations. So I am going to suggest peeling off this piece first. This is going to be your frosting piece. Go ahead and line that up. Hello, Fiona. Apparently she wanted to see what the cupcake was going to look like too. So you can line that up with your cupcake wrapper, stick that down, and then that's going to give you your basis to decorate the rest of your cupcake. So the other stickers on here are going to be um, things that you can put on top of the cupcake or things that you can use to decorate your cupcake wrapper, or you can just add them around to decorate your, um, your paper here. Okay, thank you. So I think I'm going to start out by adding one of these squiggles to decorate my wrapper here, I think I'm going to add these circles. Those look like really big, yummy candies. So I'll add those to my cupcake frosting. And then I think I'm going to use some of the stars. the edge here. Right there we go. So I'm going to use some of the stars to decorate around my picture. One more. There we go. And then I'm going to add one of these little sprinkle pieces, <laughs> I guess. Um, I'm going to put that on the top because I think that looks like a great topping to make it complete. Oh, maybe one more, one more decoration on the base of the cupcake here. Okay, so my cupcake is done. Um, but if you take a look, there's still a whole bunch of other stickers on your sheet. So you can get really creative and you can add most of your stickers to your template here. But if you want to keep going, you can always grab another piece of paper. You can draw your own cupcake template on it and then you can keep adding your stickers onto it and maybe create a different flavor. So I think that this one looks like a chocolate cupcake with lemon frosting, but you can make something entirely different based on whatever your favorite flavors are. Um, you can also continue decorating it if you have your um, crayons or colored pencils or some other stickers or washi tape at home. Feel free to make it as sparkly, fancy and dolled up as you want to. And then once you are completely satisfied that you have made the most beautiful, delicious, fantastic looking cupcake ever, um, you can go ahead and set that to the side and we'll move on to our next project. 
One of the important lessons that the characters in our story learned is that it's important to measure accurately. So like Libby and her friends making a recipe, if they don't quite get their ingredients measured correctly, then the recipe might not turn out, right? So I had originally hoped that there would be a way that we could mix and measure just like Libby and her friends did and make something really awesome together. But it didn't quite work out with our supply kit and only being able to explain things over video. So that actually became your bonus activity on the back of your handout. There's a recipe for homemade Play-Doh and it only takes four ingredients. You can mix together flour, water, salt, and vegetable oil. And then you can add in another ingredient if you want to um, make it a special color. Mix it together and then you will get Play-Doh that you're able to play with for probably a couple weeks as long as you keep it in an airtight container. So I hope that you have a lot of fun making that recipe. Um, but when I was planning our program today, I was trying to think, you know, what would go along with our theme of mix and measure that we would be able to do successfully over our video. And I thought of a book called Actual Size by Steve Jenkins. And this is a really cool book from our nonfiction section. And it has all kinds of pictures and information about different animals. And it's comparing um, their size to show you that some animals are enormous and some of them are so small. Um, but it's cool because you can compare it to your size. So this is one of the kind of neat pages that are inside the story. So on one hand, this is um, the hand of a gorilla. And then on the other, we have the pygmy mouse lemur. So the gorilla is five and a half feet tall and weighs 600 pounds. And the pygmy mouse lemur is two and a half inches tall and weighs one ounce. So you can see from this picture that the pygmy mouse lemur is maybe the size of one of the gorilla's fingers, which is pretty amazing, right? So we are going to um, start out our measuring activity with a reproduction of that page. So you can see we printed out the gorilla hand and the pygmy mouse lemur. So the first thing that you can do is take your measuring tape that's included in your supply kit and you can use it to measure the size of the gorilla's hand and the size of the pygmy mouse lemur's hands and compare those. And then you can take one of your pieces of paper, um, so maybe one of your colorful sheets of paper that you didn't use or if you just have some plain white scrap paper, that would work as well. And you can measure out your hand, trace around it, cut it out, and then add it to your paper so that you can show the size of your hand in comparison to the gorillas. Here's my piece of scratch paper. So I'm going to use a pencil to trace around my hand. I always feel like this kind of tickles. There we go. And then I'll use my scissors to cut out around the outline that I just drew. And then when I'm done with this, I can add some decoration. Um, so, you know, you can color your hand in, um, use some stickers to decorate it, add sequins or glitter glue if you're feeling really fancy today, whatever decorations you would like to add. We'll glue it down on top of our gorilla's hand and then that'll give us an opportunity to measure the size of our hands and see what that compares to the gorilla. All right, so 
one more finger here. There we go. Okay. So I think I'm just going to write my name on here. Add some glue to the back. And then add it to my paper. So I'm going to make sure that I'm lining up the bottom of my hand, the bottom of the gorilla's hand. Just press that down. All right. So you can see that size comparison there. Let's get out our measuring tapes. So if I start at the very top of my middle finger, so that's the longest part of my hand, go down to the bottom of my wrist, that's going to measure about eight and a quarter inches. So I can even write that down on my paper with a pencil that's actually sharp. There we go. All right, so I can write eight and one half inches. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for the gorilla's hand. So I'm going to start up at the top of the gorilla's middle finger, go all the way down to the bottom, and that's going to measure out to be 11, one, two, about 11 and three-fourths inches. Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 Miss Katie, I've never measured like this before with a ruler or measuring tape. I don't really know what I'm doing. And that's okay because you have a grown up that I'm sure would be more than happy to help you line up your measuring tape, figure out where exactly your measurement is going to end, and then help you read the numbers on here. So there's about three inches difference between my hand and the gorilla's hand. And I can do the same thing over here with my pygmy mouse lemur. So I think that looks like it is about three fourths inches. So I can write that down on my paper. So that means that there's almost eight inches in difference between my hand and a pygmy mouse lemur's hand, which is, that's a really big difference. <laughs> so with this activity, you can kind of get a sense um, of what the difference is between the size of these two animals. Now, hopefully you're thinking to yourself, that was really fun. I am excited about my measuring tape and I want to measure more things, right? So that is going to bring us to our final activity here. So you probably noticed your big piece of white paper. This is going to unfold to be a large sheet of white butcher paper. What you're going to want to do is to lay this down on the ground. And I would recommend if you have um, like a wood or a tile or even a cement floor, that's going to work better because you want something that is um, hard and smooth so that you can actually trace around yourself. Um, so this is an activity that you're definitely going to need a second person for. Um, older sibling or your grown-up would be able to help out. So the first step is going to be to lay out your piece of paper. Then you're going to need a pencil, a pen, a marker, and you are going to lay down on your piece of paper. I'm going to suggest um, Shavasana. So that means that you're going to lay down on your back with your arms out to your side and your legs um, parallel to each other as they go out from your body. And then have somebody go ahead, trace around you, and then we'll be able to go ahead and measure all kinds of really cool stuff. So take a few minutes to get yourself traced out, and then we'll meet back here to do our measuring.
All right, so now you have an awesome outline of you. So you are probably going to want to keep your paper either on a table or on the floor to do some measurements um, since it's going to be a much bigger picture. Um, for mine, I just did, I traced the outline of a doll that I have um, because I wanted something small enough that I would be able to easily show it to you. Um, so for the next part, there are a couple of different options. If you just want to use your measuring tape to measure your outline, and write the numbers down on your paper, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, I do also have a handout that I will um, include in the email along with our video link. Um, that is something that you, it's like a more of a worksheet that you can use to go through. So I'm gonna suggest making a few different measurements. So I'm gonna suggest measuring your head, how long each of your arms are, how long your legs are, and then going from the bottom of your toes all the way up to the top of your head and seeing how tall you are. So again, if you just want to do those measurements and see what the numbers come out to be, that's awesome, that's great practice measuring. Um, but if you are thinking, could you repeat that? Wait, what are we supposed to do? Um, then please do take a look at the worksheet because that's going to break it down step by step. It'll give you a place to write down each one of your measurements and then you will be able to compare that to what we saw with our animals in actual size. All right, now there's one final step for this activity. So you've made all of your measurements, you know how tall you are, and you've had a lot of fun practicing with your measuring tape. Our last step is going to be to decorate your outline. So you can go ahead and draw in your face, draw in your clothes, exactly what you're wearing today, or maybe one of your favorite outfits. You can get creative, you can draw you know, different patterns, stripes, polka dots, whatever. Um, choose your favorite colors, make it into more of an abstract self-portrait by drawing in things that you really like. Um, but that's gonna be our last step is to decorate our outline. All right, so here is my decorated outline um, that I did for my dolls. So you can see they are sleeping and they have a little onesie on. So I decorated it with some blue polka dots and gave them some shoes on their feet. And then I really didn't like the hair that I drew um, to start with. So I cut out a piece of paper to be like a little hat. And I decorated that with the same blue polka dots. So they have a matching ensemble hat and onesie. Um, so I would suggest, you know, again, decorate as much as you would like, make your outline look as much like you or inspired by the things that you're interested in and that you like as you can. And then of course, our final step is going to be to write our name on it. So we'll go ahead and sign our work. Because you just created a fantastic measurement masterpiece. Well, thank you so much for joining me for We Love Science. I hope that you had a lot of fun reading Libby Loves Science Mix and Measure and taking part in our story-based activities today. So the last thing that you'll find in your supply kit is a flask-shaped cup. So a flask is equipment that scientists often use for mixing and measuring in their labs. Um, this is a plastic version that you can use for your drinks, um, complete with crazy straw. So that just pops in through the hole on the top. And then you can use that for water, juice, whatever your beverage of choice is for your next meal. So something a little bit silly, uh, but when I saw it, I thought this fits perfectly with our theme and I couldn't resist. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, on our handout here, we do have, of course, our bonus activity, the recipe on the back. On the front, we have the kids' own email address. So if you do have any questions about today's activities, please get in touch and let me know. Otherwise, if you have any program feedback or if you want to share a picture of something that you've created, you know, I always love to hear from everybody and to see the awesome things that you come up with. So 
please feel free to get in touch. I hope that we get to see you at the library sometime soon. Um, Summer Library Adventure does go through the end of July, July 31st. So if you're still working on your reading log, I hope that you'll bring it back in because this year you get two awesome prizes. Otherwise, keep an eye out for our fall newsletter, which again will have the information for September and October. Thank you again for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.